Good morning and welcome to the Q2 2023 earnings call for Edifoca Limited. I'm Jermaine McDonald, CEO of Learn Grow Invest Limited, and it is our pleasure to be hosting another earnings call with you here today. At this time, I'd like to welcome Gordon Swaby, CEO of Edifoca. Morning, Gordon. Morning, Jermaine. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us again. So I'll hand over to you. Well, Jermaine, we, we forgot one important part, which is prayer. So I think we have to. <laughs> but I will allow you to lead us in, in prayer. Sure, no problem. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for the opportunity to do another session like this, Lord. We pray that this session will be meaningful for all those who will participate. We pray, Lord, that as we seek to ventilate the 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 um what has taken place for Edifocal, that persons will see just the growth and what has taken place for this company. We pray, Lord, that you'll bless all the the employees, shareholders, stakeholders, and bless this community in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you for that, Jermaine. Um, let us not make the mistake again in the future of um, <laughs> missing our, you know, missing out on starting with with prayer. So, thank you again, everybody. Good morning. Um, I, I'm happy to be here today. I'm also joined by my COO, uh, Mark Green. Um, Mark, as you know or may not know, started with us three months ago. Um, and you know within that three month span we've already started to feel the positive impact of, of of his influence and expertise um in the company and we're we're really looking forward to the next uh, six months and beyond um of course we would have released our our six month financials uh, yesterday um we're of course extremely excited about the results um we would say that almost all the indicators are looking very positive, uh, starting with, of course, net income, a 468% increase in net income. Um, you know, I, I say to everybody, blood, sweat and tears, um, getting to this point has not been easy. Um, of course, we've, we've made our mistakes, we've had our stumbles. Um, but, uh, you know, where we are now, I'm very, very excited. We have a lot of partnerships in the pipeline. We have a lot of new business in the pipeline um, and you will see that reflected in our Q3, Q4 um, and beyond. Um, you know, as as CEO, um, one, of the, one of my responsibilities and one of the responsibilities, the main responsibilities of, of, of the team is to preserve and increase shareholder value. And in 2020, we had what we thought and still believe was a visionary idea, which is Edifocal Academy. Um, Edifocal Academy was, and I'm speaking about it, um, unfortunately, in past tense at this point, Edifocal Academy was an online school for grades four, five, and six. Um, effectively, it was uh, school online. Um, there are a number of things that worked well and there are other things that did not work well and we unfortunately had to make the decision to close the school um for the financial year 2022 edifocal academy generated a little over seven million dollars in revenue um so not material not a, not a material amount of money over 12 years span for us um but from an expenses perspective it cost us 33 million dollars now again just to kind of give some background when we started Edifocal Academy, I believe in December 2022 or November 20, sorry, December, between November and December 2020, we, the environment was different, right? It was, it was a low interest rate environment. Um, economically, things were different. And, you know, of course, students were out of school and it made sense to start an online school at the time. There are things that we wanted to happen in that period um, or moving from that period that did not happen. So, for example, uh, one of the things that we were doing is that we created a, a, a company um, and we were trying to, well, and I mean, this is a perfect opportunity to, 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 to address that. There, there are two companies that are registered that um, I am still the sole shareholder in Edifocal Business Limited and Edifocal Academy Limited. Um, what was going to happen at the time is that it was supposed to become a subsidiary of Edifocal Limited. That did not happen and the companies are not used for anything at this point in time except for Edifocal Business Limited, which we have um, 
I believe one or two contracts under under um, under it. But Eddie Foka Limited does the work, um, but it does not belong to Eddie Foka Limited. Not because um, it is not something we wanted, it's because it, after after we've ex we've gone through all of the contracts related to it, we're going to we're going to close both Eddie Foka Academy Limited and Eddie Foka Business Limited. So Eddie Focal Academy Limited is not related to Eddie Focal Academy, the program that was closed in Eddie Focal and Eddie Focal Business Limited is not related to Eddie Focal Business Division, just so I'm clear. Um, but back to Eddie Focal Academy, the idea was to make it um, registered with the Ministry of Education, make it a, a school. Um, that did not happen. Um, we started to see uh, a, you know, a reduction in enrollment numbers because students were transitioning back to physical school um and it just never made sense for us to continue uh, with the school so management made a tough decision of closing the school at the end of june um, 2023 uh we've now expanded to uh africa um some of you may or may not know but our our chief strategy officer dr anna bethune is based in lagos nigeria and she has been based in lagos nigeria for a number of years and We've been looking at Africa specifically. We've been looking at Nigeria for a little bit, uh, and you know the perfect opportunity presented itself. Uh, right now, we are in negotiations with uh, a major vendor of sorts to possibly close a material contract. Um, it's still very much in its early days, um, so I'm not saying that that contract will be closed. But obviously, um, we are optimistic. We are positive that we'll be able to close a material deal in nigeria before the end of um calendar year 2023 um but at this point it is still very much in the early days of, of negotiations um so we 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 registered two entities two subsidiaries to facilitate our growth in nigeria and africa generally we created uh, and i'm using this opportunity to explain the structure and the rationale uh, we created edufocal africa inc which was registered or created in Delaware, and it's a 100% subsidiary of Edifocal Limited. Um, and we also registered Edifocal Nigeria Limited, which is a subsidiary of Edifocal Africa Inc. Mm -hmm. The idea is for every local that we expand to, um, we'll create a, a, a limited liability company in that local. So for example, if we expand to Edifo if we expand to Ghana, we'll create Edifocal Ghana Limited, and Edifocal Ghana Limited will be a subsidiary of Edifocal Africa Inc. The idea is that we are trying to facilitate uh, or possibly in the future leave the room open for us to do a fundraise for Edifocal Africa Inc. for or, or African expansion because we realize that it is a it is a massive market that deserves its own attention. Mm -hmm. um, and strategically we wanted to position ourselves in a in a way where if our capital needs cannot be met locally in terms of the, the sheer size of, of, of funds that we need to raise to aggressively expand, we want to leave the room open for us to, to be able to do that strategically. Um, next. Oh, not next. Sorry, can you bring back up the slide, Jermaine? So, um, yes. So yes, so the, you know we expanded to to, to Africa. Um, in terms of strategic initiatives, we are very very excited to relaunch our CSEC offering. As you know, that from in in the Learn Division um, right now, we offer uh, you know test prep, extra classes for students preparing for their PEP exams. Um, over the next couple of months, we're going to be reintroducing CSEC, um, and that's something that we're looking forward to, and we think it will definitely benefit our top and bottom line. From a you know CSR perspective, we did a lot in the quarter. Um, you know, it's while you while you're doing well, it's also important to to give back. Um, so we followed through on a commitment that we made in 2022, um, which is to refurbish the Joyce Robinson Hall at the Jamaica Library Service headquarters um, on Tom Redcom Road. Um, we spent over a million dollars for that refurbishing. So we painted the hall we installed about five air conditioning units, mm -hmm. which have been extremely valuable for the Jamaica Library Service. Um, we sponsored the um, Michael STEM conference 
Um, we are the we are the lead sponsor for the Jamaica stock, the JC's investor competition. Uh, we also sponsored the Jamaica Library um, Library Service Reading Competition during the quarter. So mm -hmm. those are some of the highlights um, over the quarter. Okay. I'm going to hand over to our COO, sorry, at this point, Mark Green, to you know go through very quickly the financials, and then we can keep it moving from there. Mark. All right. Thanks, Gordon. Uh, morning, everyone. Um, so I've had the privilege of joining at a, I'd say, a real ideal time, Gordon. Um, it's been an amazing three months so far with the Eddie Focal family. And um, I've actually been able to see some of the hard work put in over the last three months that contributed tremendously to these, these you know, outstanding results um so we're we're all really happy about how we've been able to push despite all the challenges and as you'll see here we we had a 58 percent in revenue year on year compared to 2022 um 210 million is no small amount for a company with say 50 plus employees so you know there's a lot of work that the team has put in and while growing the revenues, we were also able to manage our expenses. So, you know, more than 50% growth without anywhere close to 50% growth in our expenses. So kudos to the team. Um, in the last couple of months, myself and Gordon and our management team, we've been very deliberate in how we have regular check-ins. We provide guidance to the team and we we very prudently examine how we spend to deliver value for our shareholders and of course you'll see our net profit significantly up year on year um 468 percent there um in terms of assets you know we we've been entrusted with funds from the public and we we've done everything possible in the last six months to you know manage that asset base properly so there has been slight growth, but we're looking at how do we ensure that the assets are put to best use to continue to drive revenue growth. And you'll see that the liabilities went up as well, driven there mainly by a large loan um, to help us support our growth plans, both in the Caribbean and in Africa. And you'll see that decline in equity resulting from a large, a, a quite material loss at the end of 2022. Okay, just going into some of the details now, you'll see we've expanded our, our intangible asset base. And as you know, we're an ed tech and a lot of the tools we use are digital tools. So these intangible assets in the form of software or platform, we have invested and we will continue to invest to be able to deliver value on an ongoing basis. Um, there you'll see substantial increase in our receivables and prepayments. So we have quite a few you know, corporate contracts that have contributed to our prepayments here. Uh, in terms of liabilities, as mentioned there, those long-term borrowings, it was necessary for us to look at funding our ongoing activities. So you'll see that significant increase in the long-term borrowings um, while simultaneously reducing, you know, some of those short-term loans that we had on hand. Um, share capital, fairly, fairly stable. And as mentioned, we had that substantial uh, loss um, last year relative to this. Okay. Um, revenues. So, as I mentioned earlier, I came in at a time where Edufocal was really looking at how do we deliver exponential growth. And I've seen over the last couple of months that we're taking steps in the right direction through partnerships, through the types of services that we deliver now and will deliver in the future. And we see some of that manifesting in that $210 million in revenue. Um, we're also looking at every, almost every week we have our financial review check-ins as part of our management process 
to monitor how do we spend? Are we getting value for each dollar spent? And do we need to shift resources to be better able to continue this revenue growth? Um, that impairment is based on a uh, reduction in some value of the intangible assets. As Gordon mentioned, we did in fact close the Edifocal Academy. Some of that would have included um, closing website, removing uh, online platforms related to academy. And the plan is to shift focus, energy, effort into other areas that will deliver even more growth in Q3 and Q4 for this financial year. As we see there, um, through our prudent management of all our costs, we've significantly improved the profit before taxation um, and our comprehensive income. And of course, that's what five-fold increase or close to four-fold increase in our earnings per share. Okay, so cash from operations relative to last year, we've definitely trended in the right direction. Um, we're again being more prudent in how we manage cash flow in flowing in and out, how we handle the timing of payments, and how we prudently use financing to support our ongoing operations. And of course, you know that it takes cash to care. And if you don't spend wisely, you can't grow your business over time. So we have been looking at how we spend, what we spend on, and how we manage cash coming into and out of the organization to deliver value for our shareholders. Gordon, you're on mute. Thank you very much, Mark. You know, the, the, the you know, uh, Mark's um, Mark's probation came to an end recently. Um, Jermaine, you know, and I think he's passed with flying colors. So I'll have to just hand over to him fully to, to kind of just take, you know, take, take the rein and keep things moving from here. Sounds <laughs> like it, definitely. Sounds like I love it. But um, thank you very much, Mark. Um, we, you know, we, we are now at the stage of speaking about, you know, just really our outlook for the future. Um, I will start with the group structure, just, uh, you know, visually people get a, a better feel of how the group is structured. So, um we have um at the top edifocal group which technically is edifocal limited the legal entity is edifocal limited uh and of course edifocal limited owns edifocal llc which holds the assets of clever school teacher which was the acquisition that we did um in april between march and april 2022 um and then we also have edifocal limited owning edifocal africa inc which i've you know i've explained earlier uh, and Edifocal Africa Inc. owns Edifocal Nigeria Limited. So again, in the future, um, depending on the you know conversations at the management level, um, we may decide to expand into other locals in Africa, Ghana, South Africa, etc. And those those countries that we choose to expand into, we'd have a, a liability, a limited liability company in that local specifically to handle the affairs in that country, and it would be owned by Edifocal Africa Inc. We may, and again to share it with our shareholders, the general public, we may make the decision in the future to use Edifocal Africa Inc. as a vehicle to raise funds in the United States in the future to facilitate expansion, um, expansion needs that we'll have for, for, for Africa. Um, you know, we, we I would say that we, we are operating in a very very challenging economic environment not just locally but also regionally and internationally and bearing that in mind i think that we are in a very very good place again you know there are a number of things that we have on the table that i'd love to be able to talk about today but we can't and you know i'm happy with our management team i'm happy with you know the, just the group of people that we have in edifoca generally leading um leading leading the company um we've recently you know made you know strategic promotions to people who have really worked their way up in the company um and again we'll talk a little bit more about that at a later time but we're very very excited about how we're positioned and over the next few weeks and months um we will make those announcements but 
more importantly, what we're doing will reflect um, in our top and bottom line over the next couple of quarters. So we're very excited about that. And you know, we're looking forward to sharing that with you, with you in our next um, earnings call for, for Q3. Um, now for the most important part of this of this earnings call, questions and answers. Um, Jermaine, over to you so we can feel those those questions. All right. Thank you, Gordon. Great uh, presentation. Great, great first time, Mark. Uh, good, good flow throughout everything. Um, you, so what we'll do is just go jump right into the questions. I'd, I'll encourage everyone at this time to post your questions that you have for the Edifocal team. I'll be checking our community group as well. I know sometimes persons send me questions there. So while they're being placed on the screen, I'll, I'll just do a quick check to see if there's anything there. So I do will say a few in the chat now. So we'll start there. Uh, what does the remaining six months look like for the company? I guess this is the six months for 2023. So great question. You know, if you look back to our prospectus, we had two year projections in there. Um, I, I think we're either close to or we have um, completely beaten the projections for full year um, 2023 already from a profit perspective. Top line, I think we're, we're not there, but um, I would say that I am fairly confident that um, for full year 2023, we'll be able to hit the targets that we would have communicated in our prospectus to our shareholders. Um, so that's from a financial perspective, from a overall group, perspective um expect a lot of we've, we've recently concluded um we've recently concluded our or 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 strategy or five-year strategy and one of the pillars one of the pillars and this part is very important Jeremy. one of the pillars that we have in our strategy is strategic partnerships strategic partnerships are very very important to edufocal um a lot of the value that we've created have been through strategic partnerships and we have some very very exciting partnerships to announce over the next couple of months um and that will kind of form the basis of how we're moving forward whether it is strategic partnerships in africa strategic partnerships regionally or locally strategic partnerships are a big big part of our growth moving forward another pillar for us is strategic content um, you know, content is important for us, whether, we're, whether it is that we're creating high quality, high value content um, for other organizations. So creating learning content for organizations um, or creating content for ourselves internally um, that, you know, we leverage for, for our, you know, prep, test prep for PEP or for what we're doing in C6. So creating high value content um, is extremely important to us. And just to add, um, Jermaine and team they were very deliberate in how we examine these potential partners and we ensure that who we bring to the table as part of the edifocal family the impact they have will be transformational on education so we, they have to tick all the boxes for us um, we, we need to see how do we partner with these companies, these entities, these part, these vendors to deliver education solutions that transform how teachers deliver in a classroom, whether virtual or physical, transform how students engage with material, transform how we assess performance. And the goal is, as we mentioned, to continue to deliver value and grow our business and I dare say exponentially. That's how bullish we are on the rest of this year. Mark, Mark, do you think that do you think that I can you know sh share a little bit more um, from our, our strategic framework, or should we kind of not yet, up? not yet, not yet. In due time, <laughs> in due time, I'd say in the coming months we'll be well placed to share with all our shareholders and the public generally. Um, where we're going as an organization and how we will support education generally. You know, I, I, and just to add a little bit more to Jermaine um, and, and, and team, when we also talk about strategic partners, we're not just talking about partners that enable directly additions to our top line and bottom line. We're also talking about partners like Mayberry, right? Um, you know, other partners like our auditors, you know, or shareholders. 
uh, we are looking at initiatives that touch all stakeholders because all stakeholders are equally important. Um, just this morning, actually, we released um, our, ch our charters. See, I see um, our chief strategy officer, Dr. Anna Bessiun, sharing sharing she's telling me to hold off <laughs> maybe, maybe maybe Anna yeah, should hold, off, hold off right um yeah. but um no man so you know we're we're very excited we're we're a tight-knit team um tight-knit management team tight-knit company generally and we've we've had a lot of growth over the last couple of months one of the things we've done too is we've moved our company office or headquarters to summit um as you know one of our major shareholders um two of our major shareholders actually three of our major shareholders Kirk Anthony Hamilton, um, Kevin Donaldson, uh, and uh, David Walk David Walcott, Dr. David Walcott, they own um, Summit, um, and we see it as one big family. So, and again, when you talk about strategic partnerships, um, so Eddie Focal is now located at Summit. Um, that is where our office is. And we think that, you know, again, it was a strategic move for us being at Summit. Uh, we think will create synergies for us with other, um, you know, so Kevin believes very strongly in kind of, you know, family working together so we're going to be doing a lot of work with their affiliated companies um when you look at mayberry mayberry has a lot of companies in their portfolio that they work with and we're looking at partnerships um you know with a number of their companies you'll notice for example that spl has recently expanded to ghana um you know it, you know it's not outside of the realm of possibility for example for us to be doing work with supreme ventures in the future um collaborating with supreme ventures on some important initiatives um, I think a lot of people don't understand what it is that we do still. They still see us as just a PEP company and offering PEP content to students and the government pays for it. But we're so much more than that. Um, if you look at what we're doing at VHSI, one of our programs, that's, a, you know, that's um, ed tech for, for nursing students in Jamaica. Um, if you look at what we're doing at Clever School Teacher, a subscription service for, um, for, K, for K, K1, to, to, um, K1, K, K1, K2 teachers in the United States of America. Um, if you look at what we're doing on the corporate learning side, um, you know, very simple what we do on the corporate learning side, we create learning content for organizations. Um, just to give you an example, if a company, a manufacturing company, for example, a manufacturing company has key machinery that only one person in the company knows how to use. Eddie Focal comes in, we sit down with that one person, we talk to this person, we build out a curriculum based on the knowledge that is in his or her head. Um, from the curriculum that we've built out, we build out interactive learning content and we place that into a learning management system <clears throat> so that's some of the work that we're doing on the corporate learning side it's very exciting work um, and we think that there's a lot of demand specifically in the hospitality and the uh, manufacturing industry um, and again we'll talk more about that in the near future in terms of the, some of the clients that we're working with there and, and what we think is you know the groundbreaking work that we're doing there um, or our partnership with transport authority is expand expanding aggressively the Prime Minister recently announced that, um, you know, they're going to be doing, you know, the training program for the drivers. We're involved in that process um, because we are a key partner. Um, so we're looking to collaborate possibly with Heart Trust NTA on that, but also looking to collaborate with Heart on other important initiatives. So I'm just sharing a little bit there. I won't share much more. Um, but we're you, very... you, you shared a lot actually. That that was that was a lot for <laughs> months. So. You know, so we're we're very excited. I'm sure you can see the excitement, you know, on on my face. It's a lot of work. I right. uh, admit it, it's a lot of work. It is, um, but but we're very excited about what we're what we're doing right now. Awesome. I hope I answered the question. Yeah, man. I, I think you did. Um, there was actually an ask about what's the progress with Clever School Teacher. You mentioned them briefly. Is there anything that you can expand? I saw a testimonial recently from yes, someone who used the platform on Twitter. So, so this is a good opportunity to, to give you a little bit more insight into our operations. Um, yeah. You know, I said it on Twitter this morning. I am responsible for business development, sales, major collections. I receive major receivables, um, and, and and I, you know, Mark and, and I and the other, um, the other, the rest of the management team, we collaborate on strategy, right? Um, Mark is responsible for operations and strategy. Um, so in terms of the day to day, how we've structured the group is each each program and, and CST is a program in Edifocal. Each program has a program lead. And the responsible program lead yeah. for for clever school teacher is Mark Gale, who I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with. Um, I've heard that name so, so Mark Mark reports to Mark. Mark Gale reports to Mark Green. So I'm going to hand over to Mark Green to, uh, to give some updates on 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 the progress with with CST. 
Okay, so what we've done with CST, we, we are taking a customer-first approach. Who is our customer? A kindergarten teacher in the United States. And we did market research to understand what are their specific needs, you know, how do they need to engage those young ones in the classroom, um, what has been most effective for them, what hasn't worked for them, and we've used this information to refine the content that we present, how we present it, how we make it easy for them to interact with us digitally. So we, we want to get to a three-click stage where they go onto the CST website, they're clear, okay, I need to do math exercises with my K-1 class. Um, math, K-1, this area of the core curriculum, I select what I want, click, 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 I have content available. So we're looking at the full end-to-end -end journey of facilitating these K-1 to grade one teachers, being able to deliver, you know, vi vibrant, exciting, engaging content for the young ones. Um, we're also looking at how do we shift how we market. Uh, we find that in the US, um, marketing through social media with the right persons who have the, the target following that you want to reach allows you to drive sales in whatever line of business you're, you're marketing. So we've shifted how we're doing our marketing and we're seeing that we're getting more engagement, more teachers coming to us, um, more questions about how we can work with different teachers across the US. And we're also looking at, since we've taken this customer first approach in the US, done the market research, and we're now able to refine what we provide, why not leverage it at home? So we are looking at how do we engage early childhood um, teachers, students, um, by leveraging the structure we already have in place for clever school teachers. Great, great. Um, <laughs> that definitely sounds like a, a great, a great idea. Roman, you guys thought for a while I was the one, only one who worked at Edu Focal, right? <laughs> I, I wouldn't say that, but you know what? It's it's really good to hear um, just the, the the depth of understanding that Mark clearly has from his few months at the company, being being in it every day for the last few months, and mm -hmm. and having that pulse on on the business. It, it's good to hear. Um, in terms of what's what, what what's being done, so and um, and just to add, we also have the benefit of a solid set of professionals in Edifocal. Yeah, like this is the first company I've worked with where um, we're all trying to pull together. I mean, it's not very we're not perfect yet, but we, we're getting there, and we have people with the right experience, skill set. Um, that can really help drive the growth that we're looking to deliver. So it's, it's been a really good three months for me since joining the team. Awesome. Awesome. All right, uh, Gordon, I think this one is for you. Are there any acquisitions in the pipeline for 2023? I guess for the remaining six months. I think I'm done talking for the rest of the day. I'm just going to hand over to Mark. I'll let Mark answer that question, Jeremy. I'm not okay. sure if you're trying to direct this stuff at me. I'll let, I'll let Mark answer that question. All Acquisition, right, that's, that's an interesting way of looking at things. We have multiple strategic partnerships that you'll hear more about in the coming months. Um, in terms of acquisitions, I can't say there's anything we're looking at right now, but that doesn't mean if an opportunity presents itself and we do our due diligence and we think this is what is aligned with our strategy, yeah. Um, that we won't consider those opportunities. But right now, the focus is um, closing out on those strategic partnerships that will enable us to deliver more value for the remainder of this year and the years to come. Great. So I did have a question related to Clever School Teacher. Have you 
gotten the the opportunity to really assess the size, the the potential market size for that for that for that product in the US? Because I mean, fifty states, thousands, possibly millions of teachers. Have you millions. really? Have you have you gotten we, at we, just an idea as to what your potential for growth is there? Yes, we've done some initial estimates. Um, getting feedback from you know different partners in the us and let's just say it's potentially multiples of what we're doing now yeah. but it will take time and more resources and proper planning and execution to be able to go into the key markets a texas a california a new york state to really deliver value but yes the potential in the us is tremendous um the the way to go about it you know has to be very deliberate through again through the right partnerships um and ensure that where the content we provide is perfectly aligned with the core curriculum for the different age groups okay great all right next question here um this one is definitely for you garden um you hinted at a financial literacy initiative, but have not yet announced. Is that coming soon? Yeah, you're muted again, Gordon. Forgive me. Mm -hmm. um, we signed a major um, agreement with a major uh, entity in Jamaica. Um, yeah. I can I can I can announce that um, it's a multi-year partnership. It's a very material partnership for us from a financial perspective. Yeah. Um, and we're looking forward to announcing that um, within the quarter. Okay, correct. Right. All right, uh, next question here. And it's a series of questions actually from, from this person. So I'll just ask them kind of back to back. Um, what was the revenue split between the Edifocal Learn and Edifocal Business? Mm -hmm. So that's a great question. Um, it varies from quarter to quarter. Um, it, 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 so I'd say a lot of the things on the Edifocal Learn side are very seasonal. So whether it's a, the CSD or, so obviously we'll see an uptick in, in subscription sales for CSD closer to the start of the school school term. Of course, when it is during the summer, things will you know, taper off a bit. Similarly with our, our PEP offerings and so on and so forth. What has changed the game for us, however, is what we're doing on the corporate learning side because there's really no seasonality generally. Um, so I think for this quarter, um, for the for the for the June quarter, it was around sixty percent, um, around sixty percent from eighty four called business. Um, but we're 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 anticipating that full year twenty twenty three, it will actually be like an even split about fifty fifty. Um, and it's hard to speak about the potential for for either of them because we have so many things coming on both ends and in both divisions um it's hard to say oh this division is more promising than the other one because you know it, it it is we're doing a lot right now and again we're very very excited we're working on one part, uh, product in particular we're calling it amigo that's all i'll say for now that i think is a game changer um for 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 for, for schools in jamaica and really helping teachers to take things uh, to take their learning and what they're doing in in their classrooms to the next level um, and, and that is something that we're launching in September. We're looking forward to sharing that more with the general public and our shareholders. All right, awesome. So the next related question is what was the pre-tax profit split between the two segments? So I believe what you spoke about was the revenue split. Um, mm -hmm. in, so in we're not, we're not, we're not, I'd say we're not there yet in terms of our ability to properly communicate to the general public that split. Um, but, but segment reporting is on our radar and we're working towards being able to have that segment split both from a revenue perspective and a profit perspective um, in the future. So that's something that's on the cards. I uh, can't speak to when exactly we'll do that, but that is something that we're looking at for the future. Okay. All right. And another question here. How, how has the $200 million bond raise from MIL been utilized? And what is the strategy for repayment? So it's a seven-year facility. Um, you know, the repayment will be facilitated through through increased earnings. Um, you don't borrow money. Um, you know, if you don't believe that, you can you can grow your 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 top line and your bottom line to facilitate repayment. But I would also say that if you look at if you look at all of the recent listings, um, Jermaine, we've actually raised the least amount of money. 
our valuation was a little under seven hundred million dollars when we listed, and we only raised one hundred thirty million dollars. Um, you know what that that means is that you know there is the the opportunity for us to do an additional raise, an equity raise. Um, and I think based on our impressive performance over the last two quarters and what we expect to do over the next two quarters and beyond, I think that we're dedicated shareholders um, who already own the company will you know still be interested in earning more of the company if the right offer presents itself. Um, so let's see how the next couple of months look. Let's see how we position ourselves for the increased opportunities that are out there, increased, you know, including opportunities in Africa, you know, opportunities locally. Because what you don't want to do is you don't want to use cash on hand for, for, for R&D. You don't want to use cash on hand for, for things like building out Amigo that have, um, that have long-term potential and, and, and tremendous opportunity for growth. So, so if we're looking at any additional raise, it is not... To, to, to maintain us as a going concern, it is to be able to facilitate the things that we think will provide exponential growth for the group. Okay. I think, I think I'd missed one of the previous questions related to the, the discussion of the split. This one here is asking, has there been any recovery in the bad debt written off by Eddie Focus? Yeah, man. So as you, you know, everybody knows there was, there was that hit um, in 2022, that non-cash ECL hit. We've, yeah. we've actually started collecting on that and we've started doing reversals already. Not not as far as we want to, um, but definitely I'd say by year in 2020, 23, we should see a material um, reversal in terms of collecting on, on, on those monies and, um, and, and, and benefiting from the upside of that, both from a balance sheet perspective, but also from a cash flow um, perspective. Okay. Next question, what are the main income generating activities or initiatives in Nigeria? <laughs> so main income earning opportunities so that's actually a, a, a one of our, our teachers at edu focal uh, michelle watts thank you for the question oh, michelle um so we're focused heavily on teacher training in nigeria in lagos specifically uh, again that is being led by um dr annabeth you our chief strategy officer who is going to be the lead on the ground um in nigeria for those opportunities um we'll share more on that soon but there's a huge opportunity um in 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 nigeria that we've identified for teacher training and we'll be leveraging a lot a lot of what we've built um already for use in nigeria and that's that's the beautiful thing about software you know you you there's a lot there's a lot of you know front loading of the costs but then you, yeah. you, you just keep selling and selling and selling um and the cost effectively only happen you know there's a one-off big big cost associated with the build out but then you benefit from the upside of that um, because you're selling the same software, the same content over and over to different people. Um, so we're looking forward to 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 to, um, to benefiting from that. Great. Okay. All right, uh, Fitzroy. I think your question has already been answered um, in terms of acquisition. So I'll move on if that's okay. Um, <laughs> So you mentioned earlier, Gordon, uh, strategic content. Do you have any examples that you could share? I don't want to delve too deeply into our strategy right now. Remember, we have competitors, um, Jeremy, mm -hmm. um, but no, we wouldn't want to delve too deeply. I mean, we will share a little bit more on our strategy at a later date, and we might have a special call for that, even um, outside of an earnings yeah. call. And we'll okay. certainly bring it to learn, go, invest um, first. Great. I like the sound of that. Christoph, Christopher is asking, can we expect... Any wait, wait, wait. You're, not, you're not giving this man the credit that he he, he deserves, Jeremy. He's not just a Christopher Berry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, I read the name, I was like, is that? Okay. Um, welcome, Chris. Chris, uh, good to have you here. Um, Christopher is asking, um, can we expect Eddie Focal to continue on the six months earning trajectory for the balance of the year or should we expect earnings to be volatile going forward I, I excellent question i'd say thank you mr berry sir um <laughs> so chris berry as you know is um executive chairman at maybe investments and one of our major shareholders um so we don't expect we don't expect to be hitting 40 50 20 30 million in profits every single quarter we expect profits to be consistent in terms of we expect to have profitable quarters, um, but we don't expect it to be the same. So for Q3, Q4, we expect Q4 um, actually to be the best quarter overall for us um, this year. Um, we still expect Q3 to be profitable, but definitely 
you know, and, and again, we're, we're experiencing phenomenal growth and a lot of the company itself continues to change um, and, and trends continue to change. So we, we, when we were just focused on test prep for students, um, you know, you would say that there's a lot of seasonality around Edifocal where the summer period was slow for us. But now that we've introduced corporate learning, now that we're focused on creating learning content for organizations, um, you know, giving organizations um, learning management systems, it, it changes it changes that flow around when we when we you know when the revenue hits and and when that profit also hits our bottom line. So the short answer is we don't expect any major volatility um, moving forward. Great. Uh, Michelle is asking who pays for the educational products and services offered in the Clever School Teacher Market? Teachers, parents, or the government, the U.S. government? I'll hand that one over to Mark. The short answer: teachers. Um, but we are looking at how do we start engaging more parents because, you know, there are the parents who may want to get their children additional content, more activities, keep the hyperactive kids engaged with the right content that will be fun, help them learn. So we are looking at ways to engage parents as well as more schools and teachers in the U.S. Okay. All right. I'm just doing a quick run through i believe there are two questions that i might have missed so the first one is can you explain the impairment line item it's on the statement yeah. yeah so so the impairment speaks to receivables actually so per the ifrs 9 rules if you have receivables i mean and most of our receivables are fairly current at least current within historicals in terms of how long it usually takes us to carry back. So per the IFRS 9 rules, um, if the receivables are over, if a certain kind of receivable is over a certain period, um, you, you have to, management has to apply an impairment, um, an impairment estimate to that, to that amount. So that is why we have that impairment um, amount. But if you look at the impairment um, for, for, for this year compared to last year, you'll notice that it is much smaller on large amounts of receivables. So um collections have gotten much better um you know we've 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 done sizable collections this year and again the benefit of having a mark green on you know on the team is you know we we were very clear from day one what the the, the 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 separation is in terms of his responsibilities and my responsibilities i absolutely 100 percent love sales i love business development um and i love collections i, I will make those calls right and i will be knocking on doors um, so it is very clear what my responsibilities are, and it is very clear what Mark's responsibilities are, which is daily operations, as I've said before, and strategy. Um, and I think we're already seeing the benefit of that in the in the in the in the group in terms of our ability to collect and how timely collections happen. So um, while we'll always have receivables, we expect the 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 aging of it to increase, not increase. We expect the aging to get better, and we yeah. expect collections to increase in terms of the timeliness of those collections. Okay. I'll definitely say it it even the way that um you're presenting feels different. Feels like a different company overall, I must say Thank in, you. in the in the last few months. I, I don't know if I can attribute all of that to Mark, but you know, <laughs> yeah, right, no. right, right, right timing, you know, for everything. But, yeah. So, it, it, so my chairman, my chairman said to me the other day, Jeremy, that we've now brought in professionals. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, you know, I, Mark and I have great chemistry. We're a great team. Um, you know, myself and the rest of our management team, we are a great team, and and we love working with each other. Um, and and we think that you know, a company is its people, right? And if yes. the people don't have good chemistry, good synergy. And you know, as as Mark mentioned earlier, we're not a hundred percent there yet, and we're going to be completely honest. We're not a hundred percent there yet, but definitely between January and now, we've seen significant improvement. And you've you've commented on that, Jermaine. Um, only expect that to improve over the next couple of months as we grow closer as a team, um, and 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 start to work even better with each other. Okay, I was going to ask you if if it's if it's the the um continued journey of being a, a father and husband also you know working on oh absolutely, absolutely. Mark, mark is a married man to with with you know funny mark has mark has two kids boy and a girl and a wife mm -hmm. i have 
one child and on Friday I'll have another child and I'm having a girl, so it's boy and girl, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but Mark does have some time on me in terms of how long he's been married and how old his kids are. So definitely that is what <laughs> that is what you see. Yeah, yeah. Great motivation. Absolutely. If, if, it's, if it's one thing that keeps you focused and being more efficient at work, it's family. So absolutely. Right. I believe we have um a question here from the born in what areas are you recruiting or seeking new talent if any uh instructional designers um project managers management yes project management is a big thing for us um programmers um you know we are always looking for talented people um yeah. If you go to the edufocalgroup.com website and you look at the bottom, there is a link to our jobs page. Um, you can always go there and, and um, we're looking for item writers um, yes. because we are focused on writing high quality assessment items. Um, hint, hint, you know, I won't go much more into that. But definitely, if you go to the jobs page, you'll see some of the, some of the positions that we are um, hiring for. We update that fairly regularly. Okay, great. Thank you for that. And the final question that we have for today, it seems, uh, what was the point of doing an IPO, having a share capital of 185 million currently, and not raising more money as opposed to taking on debt? Um, I think you kind of alluded that um, as as a potential to leverage that additional money that you have the ability to raise. Yeah. Um, so. so let me just give some more context on that. So, you know, management made a decision in 2022 that. Um, we, we had opportunities for growth that we wanted to position ourselves for. And the money that we borrowed from Mayberry in 2022 was to position ourselves for the opportunities that we are benefiting from. No, we chose debt and not equity because of what we were looking to do with the funds, right? Um, and we wanted to keep the door open for equity. Now, the thing is, when you raise, when you raise equity, the expectations, um, the expectations for the returns um, increase, which is why we raised the amount of money that we, we, we raised in 2020, in 2022, which is $130 million. So you raise more money. So let's say we decided to do a rights issue. Um, you know, the APO, APO is, a, is a dirty word, right? <laughs> but let's say we decided to do an additional raise. Um, you know, you issue new shares. It means then that the kind of performance that is expected from us by our shareholders and when that performance is, is, is expected, um, you know, changes, right? So um when we when and if we decide to do a raise um Jermaine and team it will be because we are so confident that we can give you give shareholders the kind of returns that they want in a very i mean just surpassing expectations um so if yeah. and when you see that 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 prospectus document come out about an equity raise from Edifocal, um because i think we can raise an additional 340 million there about um, if and when that happens, it is because we are very, very confident that we can be prudent with the money and give it a kind yeah. of return that you're looking for in a very short space of time. Um, because we have to be responsible with shareholders' money. Okay. Yeah. So, not, so not that we that won't be responsible with the loan funds. But <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. What I'm saying is yes. <laughs> yeah, man. Our greater the expectations are different. Exactly. Yeah, I hope that yes. point is clear. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, man. <laughs> just just a comment here that somebody messaged me to say, um, it it seems like Mark will be due for a promotion soon. <laughs> um, since Gordon is passing off a lot of the questions. Him, so Well, you know, I did do some of the work today, but you know, um, you know, Mark yeah. is very capable, so you know. Yeah. I believe that's it uh, for everyone who is watching. If we missed any of your questions, feel free to leave it in the comments under the video and we'll get back to it as soon as we can. Um, well, I see one question kind of sneak under the line here from, from Akeem. At current prices, are you increasing your stake? I, th I think you get this every earnings call, right? So I think you, you are expecting it. So I'm always interested in buying more Edifocal shares. Um, I mean, it really yeah. depends on, on, on liquidity, my own personal liquidity, um, because the mm -hmm. thing is, my goal when I buy is to not sell, um, but sometimes you have liquidity needs and, and from time to time, you know, I'll, I'll have to do what I have to do. But ultimately, uh, I'm, all, I'm, I'm a net buyer um, of Edifocal shares. That is my goal. Great. 
Okay. All right. So thank you everyone for all of those questions. I believe we had a very rich conversation this morning. I'm, I'm just thinking of all the different um, segments that we could actually pull out of this call and have, you know, standalone videos for, for persons to kind of just understand the areas that you've, you've explained. Uh, thank you so much, Gordon and Mark, for just the, the breadth of information that you shared with us. So, yeah. Gordon, I'll hand over to you, or I don't know if you want to hand over to Mark for any sure. final comments. Gordon will take this one. Gordon. And, you know, those who um, are, are listening in. So, you know, as usual, Jermaine, in good times and bad, we will do these earnings calls. Um, thank you for, 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 for having us. I think it's it's important to communicate with our stakeholders, to communicate with our, with, with our shareholders, to communicate to the general public about where we are to better understand the company, to better understand us and our ethos or philosophy. Uh, you know, the last couple of months have not been easy. Um, you know, they've been very tough, uh, but we are very, very excited about the future. And we're looking forward to just continuing to add shareholder value to not only preserve um, shareholder value, but to increase it and, and really give people the returns that they're looking for. Because when you make a decision to invest in our company, you are investing with the expectation of return um, and not below average returns, but above average returns. And that is exactly what we are we are aiming to do. So thank you very much for the vote of confidence in us, in our team. Uh, and we're looking forward to another solid um, couple of quarters and, and giving you know shareholders what, what, we, what they deserve, which is solid return on their investment. So thank you very much and all the best for the rest of the month and the rest of the year.